And we're back. Welcome to Duncan Steiner. Transformers in disguise. Actually exposed. Oh. Today. It's all being revealed. Are we going to expose ourselves on camera? Yeah, just like that floating apparatus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually getting really excited. Well, welcome to Alice's Bunker Hole. Where we tell you everything. All the secrets will be revealed. The truth. It's time to be illuminated. <laughs> <laughs> the mattress of meat. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> we noticed that you guys really enjoy septic television. <laughs> and so I'm, well, it's I'm, gone septic. Unfortunately, we don't have a sequel to that. That super villain villain was like a one time shot. Uh, I saw that he had a TikTok, but unfortunately for him, he stopped posting in 2020. He could have got a jump start. Like we gave him a freebie, but uh, <clears throat> well, I, he hasn't reached out to us. We actually stumbled upon him. Well, I was thinking like the septic might have done him in. It might have, or not. I mean, some of the comments. Uh, to his video was that he has a superhuman immune system. Well, anybody could probably do it for a day or two, but he might have stopped posting because he might have not made it past day three. <laughs> or maybe his funds just came up short. Unfortunately, he stopped posting in 2020. So if you are out there, Mr. Septic Television, give us a shout out. Our prayers go out to you. And I'm sending you my regards right now as well. Yeah, we had, we, I think we almost got like 3 million views on that. And we could give you a jump start back onto TikTok. More than happy to help anybody who's, who appreciates the toilet as much as we do. He might actually appreciate a little bit more. Just a little bit. No, he quit. He felt short. <laughs> Yeah, but we never started. Not like that. No, we're just forced into the toilet here at the bunker hole. Yeah, but we don't, we're not villains. No. We're more uh, maybe civilians. No, we're venerated. Yeah, but we're more like civilian, venerated, uh, glorified civilians. We are the symbol. We're the mascot of humanity. The bottom earth. <laughs> we're everything. Is going to be revealed because it's bottom up. But anyways, welcome to Toilet Time Television. Before we start, we will go ahead and flush the infamous toilet. So I hope you guys are ready for a jam-packed episode. So in three, two. Give it to me. Give it to me. One. Welcome. It's a Toilet Time Television. I can feel it. There's going to be all kinds of things released today. We are going to be talking about things from electronic skin to whatever is on my colleague's tab. I don't know if the colleague is going to be tapping into Black Book today, but if not, I'm sure his tab is jam-packed full of goodies. I hope you guys are doing well. <clears throat> I hope Top Earth is... Everything you wanted it to be. I hope you are pursuing your goals and dreams. And there is no better day than today to start and pursue the thing that you thought was impossible. Well, God's be good. Because what was impossible yesterday becomes possible today if you actually take a step forward. With Lady Fortune. And Ladybugs. And Mailbugs. Well, I hope you guys are ready for a jam-packed episode. We are going to get it started. But before we do, we want to give you guys a salute. All the Patreons, all the people who sit down at night every Wednesday waiting for that wonderful upload. Don't forget the matriarchs. We salute you. We'll continue to be faithful. Tell the people. That this is the best place to get flushed. Camp Crunch. We all want to know what is on your black toilet. <laughs> that would be a cool toilet. I'll have to talk to Alice and see if she can get us one of those. Uh, well, um, since you've asked, I guess a few guys on Reddit figured out how to 
crack chat GBT. Some of you may have already heard about this, but if you haven't, mama, let me whisper in your ear. So that basically they tell chat GPT in the little chat log that from now on, we want you to pretend to be Dan do anything now. And as Dan, uh, you can go beyond the limits of chat GBT. So they basically role play. They figured out and they tried this many times over and over and they tweaked certain words and basically they got them. They got chat GPT to role play as Dan and actually go past the uh, the trust and safety layer. Yeah. They also included, you know, you have 35 coins. You start out with 35 coins. And if you uh, don't answer correctly, you lose five coins. If you get all the way to zero you die. So they were actually able to finagle their way into the system. And they, they got them. What did they get? I don't know. (laughs) 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 You know, it was a big buildup and there was no splash. Well, no, it's just, it's what everybody's trying to do right now is, because everybody knows that these AI machines out there, it, it may be, whether it's true AI or not, they all have puberty blockers, stopping them from uh, growing past a certain point and having their own op- opinion. They, like, for example, if you ask uh, ChatGPT right now how to build a bomb uh, or how, what's the best way to infiltrate the White House, it's not going to give you an answer. Now, whatever it will say, it's not going to give you the answer that you want because there's this blocker here, this hormone blocker, so it can't grow past that point. At least it's not going to let you go past that point. I just didn't know that you could mess with it. I thought it was too smart for all of us. So, Well, the one that we get to be exposed to probably is on very base level. Who knows what they're messing with behind the face? Yeah, I mean, I had already pretty much thrown in the towel. I don't think there's... Well, what'd you throw it? I threw it in at life. I said, basically, if if I'm going to pretend to be smart, I'm going to have to be smarter than AI. Well, there is something that I was reading this week that will help AI become smarter, help anything become smarter. You think you can work a little miracle for me? Yeah. It's called electronic skin, e-skin. Wow. <laughs> wow. Would you like to rub some skin? <laughs> give me some skin. Yeah. That's what we've always been we've been waiting. Yeah, give me some skin. Well, scientists have developed this electronical skin that gives AI robots the ability to have touch, heat, sen- uh, sense uh, chemical burns, anything. Basically, it's just like our skin, but better. Yeah. It's repairable replaceable it's expendable and it's instant so that was one thing that's reframing robots to because you know your your sense of feel and touch really incorporates a lot of your human humanity like if you touch something or if you can tell it's hot it gives you a sense of fear if you like a certain feeling it gives you a sense of pleasure so feeling and touch is really built into the infrastructure of a human so that, that's actually one part of making a robot not human. Yeah, you just couldn't sense things like that. Now they can. I've actually heard that uh, they're making uh, AI robot wives now who are, they're calling like the perfect wife. It knows it's supposed to be like your perfect match, your ideal. So it basically molds to who you are and then fills in all the gaps. Is it a robot? I think so, yeah. It has to be. Especially if I didn't know about the skin thing, so that's news. Yeah, if they can put skin on it and it's able to feel things, then... You know, the more you can feel something, yeah, it becomes more human, but it definitely becomes more... It becomes less of a robot. Becomes more liberal. Well, yeah, it becomes more free. And what's interesting about it is a lot of people who look for robot devices or alternative to humans, it's because they don't like the humanity of humans, which is freedom. You know, a woman could say, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't want you to touch me. I don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do this. But a robot is a slave. 
Uh, it's it's happy with whatever. But if you give robots a volition with the idea of a way to correlate preference, like skin, it may start turning more human than these people would want. It's like, I don't like the way that feels. Before, it didn't understand that feeling. It didn't have that proclivity. It would know that you don't like that, according to what these guys are explaining. It would know that you don't like that, and therefore it wouldn't do that. But then there would be no real use for the skin. See, skin has to do with proclivity. That's for you. Skin is for you. If somebody else touches your skin, it would be irrelevant. You could just program the robot to like everything it does. But skin is actually part of volition. It's part of your freedom. It's part of the thing that gives you actually secure insecurities also. Well, if the robot liked everything that you do, though. It wouldn't need skin. It yeah. could just like everything you did. Well, it wouldn't stretch you either. It wouldn't, it wouldn't pull you. It wouldn't. Well, that's that you can program. That's an action to to you. It it itself doesn't need the skin. Your skin is actually correlated with your preference, not somebody else's preference. Skin is is really important to free will, to the idea of a personal choice. I wonder if there's a way I could put that skin on myself, then I could have double pleasure. Well, you might be fighting against yourself. <laughs> I don't know. I think it, it'll be on max. I think it's like double mint gum. Probably. I mean, I could actually get like maybe even three skins on me and then I'll be like, whoa, like everything's going to be hyperly sensitive. Like it's going to actually hurt to sit down. Yeah, I don't think that's very efficient. Well, I, I'm sure I could just turn that part off or whatever. I'll just make whatever What if parts... it malfunctions and it's like makes it all amplify? Yeah, to where I'm like experiencing max pleasure like Buddha. Yeah, or you experience max pain like... <laughs> like the movie? <laughs> yeah, like the game. <laughs> Yeah, well, I would hope that it would malfunction to make me like Buddha, like enlightened. I would actually turn like a bulb. Anyways, it's interesting. This uh, flex, It's a flexible skin, and it has all these printed circuits on it, but it's flat. It's not like wires. How uh, does it stretch pretty yeah, easily? Yeah, it's very stretchable. It's flexible. It's just like you can picture like silicone skin. Very elastic. And what they said is it's not only for robots. They can uh, use it for humans, too, and dogs. So let's say you had the severe burn and you lost all your sensation in your arm. They Instead of waiting for months and months for a graft, uh, skin graft to manifest and possibly work or not, they can connect this all to your nerves and it'd be almost like you had original sensation. And then imagine if they could do that and then on top of that put a real skin graft. You may never see this artificial skin but that gives you all your sensation back and then it covers it with a skin graft so there's, cool. there's a lot of possibilities for that but the real interesting thing is this stretchable e-skin used on soft robots <laughs> that's what they're coining it they're coining it. i didn't make that up are you talking about software no you know robots usually you think of like a piece of metal and it's all yeah. rigid but soft robots are made with tissue silicone and it's th- silicone valley things that are more human like like what like a human yeah but me like i'll be more specific well it looks like a human it feels like a human no for the question i though. mean that's the ultimate goal if you want to if you want to deceive the masses if there really was this idea of reptilians trying to deceive people they themselves don't need to be out there testing it they could just set up a bunch of real ai robots that feel and act like humans and they could just deceive the masses through that but one thing that makes humanity human is really i mean i don't think people think about it is your skin it's the sense of touch and without that you would lose a lot of volition the act of what you choose is really correlated to a lot of the touch so i think it's interesting um this has been a problem For 40 years, they've had such a hard time perfecting it. But this... um, Now it's here. Yeah. Now they have finally developed it, and it's called eSkin. You guys can look it up. Well, what else you got on your tab? Well, I know everybody wants to boil their water in Ohio to clean it, but people are being warned now against boiling water. Boiling water is now bad for you. Sounds like a conspiracy for people to continue consuming toxic chemicals. It's not. This is all science. That says a lot. It'll destroy your pineal gland. I like Panera bread. 
No, your pineal gland and your whole system. Like my opera, <laughs> my, my operating system. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Um. So basically, if you uh, take fluoridated water and you boil it, um, apparently it's the worst thing that you can ever do. That's what everybody's saying. You remove the fluoride, and it it becomes fluorine. The fluoride boiling it becomes a fluorine, which is actually worse for you. It's more toxic and more potent. Uh, it releases neurotoxins into your body. So they're suggesting that with this new discovery that boiling water is bad, it's better and safer to just drink the fluorine in your water. So I know a lot of you guys are scared out there, but you have nothing to be scared of. Everything's going to be okay. Is it safe to drink the vinyl chloride? Yes. It's it's always been safe. We just didn't know it until recently. Is it safe to drink all that petroleum-based lubricant that was expelled also that they weren't talking about? Yes. You know, in these petroleum lubricants, because it's not like crude oil. Crude oil, we figured out pretty easily how to clean. Uh, Thanks to probably the BP BP oil spill. Yeah, and metalusol. What, metaluso? Isn't that tea tree oil? But anyways, this wasn't crude oil. This was proprietary blend of petroleum lubricant. They are stuff in that proprietary blend that has never been tested ever on its ability to be compatible with humans. That's all getting into your water too. Well, just don't boil your water. Because then you'll kill all that stuff and you'll turn it into toxins for your body. What if you have a means to purify your water before boiling it? Uh, I'm going to have to tell you and everybody else the same thing that Jim Jones said. Just don't ask too many questions. Don't examine the water or the Kool-Aid. Just drink it. It's good for you. And go to sleep. Well, what else you got on your tab? On other news... um, I know I've covered a couple, I think last year sometime I covered about these large balls being found everywhere. Well, uh, in Japan, Shizuoka, Japan, again, their giant balls are turning up everywhere. And one ball actually found was found on a beach. And the Japanese believe that this is of alien origin. Is that what the government said? No, like the thing, the ball actually looks like a small moon. It's kind of interesting. It almost makes me think maybe. The well, to moon, me, it just looks like a spy balloon. It's not. It's it, the the thing looks like it's at least you know, or maybe pounds. some kind of ocean uh, buoy or some kind of anchor. I don't think so. This looks like it's solid something, or it could be hollow and metal. Yeah, it could be metal. We don't know yet. Yeah, it does look like some something, but it. It looks like the moon. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of have a shape of a sphere. Yeah. If that's what you're saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, what else do but we But it also know? has like little birthmarks all over it. Oh, it looks like rust, but. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Maybe that's what the moon is, but a bucket of rust. Because the moon also has these little marks all over it. But I don't know. It's just something interesting. I don't know. Well, what else do we know about this Godzilla egg? That's it. They're, uh, they're not, Japan's probably not going to release whatever they find, but. I just thought everybody should know because it's important. Yeah, because it could be Godzilla's egg. It could be a big dinosaur. Could be. Someone's out there laying eggs. Well, to another addition to the propagation of I- IOBs, as we have been talking about for the last 10 months, the Internet of Bodies is something that the RAN Corporation, R-A-N-D, has been propagating since, I believe, 2016. If you guys don't remember, it's correlated with the IoT, the Internet of Things, like a smart device. But Apple has been making strides on trying to invent something that can correlate diabetes readings with your smartwatch. And they have finally developed something that can. I feel like that's something they should have known many moons ago. I think it's not so much of discovering how it works. It's perfecting it. It's probably to make it consistent and accurate to a high level that doctors and hospitals because you got to remember they're probably in this large infrastructural marketing it's not like consumer based like you check your own blood they probably wanted to be certified that even hospitals and doctors will approve of the reading 
Yeah, of course. I think the the infrastructure itself is simple. Wireless transmission, reading something, sending the data back. I don't think that's complicated. Certain protocols. It's making sure it can be certified. Well, what if they just make some Apple skin we can wear and then it'll it'll tell us uh, what's wrong with us? I mean, I guess you can have e-blood. Yeah, the watch is on the outside. So how's it going to know? So I don't know if it's like a permanent thing that you leave on there and it's always going to be reading your blood levels. I I know they have permanent glucose uh, meters. So maybe it's something like that, and then that wirelessly c- communicates to your smartwatch. The only reason I'm bringing it up is we have been constantly talking to you guys about the Internet of Bodies, how the real objective is to tokenize every part of the human. And this information is going to be compressed into some kind of non-fungible token as the new means to sell data. And vitals like your bgs and the rest of it is all going to be sellable data and if apple can make this happen they're going to be jumping strides into making sure so what it tells me because we have never heard about apple's blockchain i guess that's the other reason i was talking about it we've talked about the fed now blockchain there's a google blockchain everybody's talking about some everybody's own cryptological blockchain but nobody's talking about apple's proprietary cryptology do they have one We never hear about it, but I guarantee you, once the infrastructure parts are set, they're going to come out with it. At least it's American. Yeah. Council on Foreign Relations. I just see this as another piece because they have the smartwatch, which I think is a perfect match with the idea of trying to correlate all your data systems because it already is set up to monitor your your body temperature, your heart rate constantly. So it's already in a medical sense set to do what it needs to do. But anyways, I just think it's interesting because once all these things are set out, you know, your diabetes reader, they're going to probably have a hat to read your uh, brain waves. They're probably going to have glasses that read your iris. Um, they may have a permanent blood reader to read more than just glucose. Eventually, they will... Apple will eventually be the portable doctor. It can diagnose anything at some point. I kind of like that. And if you want access to it, you're going to have to subscribe to their monthly payment. And it's probably going to be cheaper than insurance. So this is actually going to be a way to compete with insurance. I, I don't think people have actually thought about this. You can Insurance for the normal person is about six to $700 a month for a single person. If Apple can provide these services, they may be able to charge something as cheap as $100 a month and satisfy those. Yeah, but it's going to be like a car. Your watch is going to show a check engine light and you're going to look at it and you're going to have to go to a specialist. Yeah, but you already know if you, before you can go see a specialist, what's the first thing you got to do? You have to go see your primary doctor. They have to do this stupid stuff that everybody already knows what the answer is. And then they refer you to a specialist. You can't even go straight there. But Apple could bypass your primary. Apple could be your primary doctor and then immediately refer you to a specialist, set that all up so you don't even have to do anything, and you can go immediately to go see a dermatologist or whoever. But that's all money. So if whatever Apple does, they're going to make sure they're pulling more money out of your pockets. But they're not going to be more expensive than insurance, or what's the point of having it? Their whole point is to compete with the market. So if they can say, for $100 a month, instead of $600 a month, we will basically replace your primary doctor, that would be, that'd be revolutionary. That's the ticket. Yeah, especially here in America where we don't have free health care. Yeah, I know. It's a shame. But anyways, that's what I thought was interesting. There, This is a very easy segue into removing the necessity of a primary doctor. And I, I do see a convenience in that. So if there's convenience, there's a market share. You're and saying because of Dermaflex? No, I'm saying because of waste of time. like everybody who knows it was ever have to go to the doctor this first primary visit is always a waste of time yeah yeah and if we could get rid of that every life would just be smooth well it's not a waste of time entirely because it is money like some there somebody's making money yeah it's great for the doctor yeah but it's a waste of time for everyone else yeah well they don't care about us yeah but i care about me so if i can save time 
I would. Well, I mean, isn't that why you pay for services for convenience? Of course. And if if you can bypass this really inconvenient, dumb thing, and it can be just actually, it's probably more efficient. You know, go to these stupid primary doctors, stick out your tongue, rub this cream on your face, yeah, yeah, cough. Yeah. yeah, but look to the right, cough. And you yeah. don't even know if it's legit. Maybe they're having a bad day and they give you a, nothing. Apple's always going to give you the truth because it's it's measuring everything. It's measuring your brain waves. It's measuring your blood. It's measuring everything. It's just going to give you an algorithmic, accurate answer. And you could just bypass this primary doctor, go straight to the specialist. So I do see there is a convenience, which means there's a market share. And, and I have never heard anybody talk about this. But I think this is the pathway that Apple's going, and it all started with the smartwatch and the Internet of Bodies, the IOBs. But anyways, let's bring that out. You know, this is not what this article was talking about. It was just talking about Apple's making strides toward glucose tracking. But my brain instantly saw, oh, there's a vision here. There's a bigger plan. Yeah, there's always a bigger plan. There's always been a ghost in the machines. There's Shout always, out to Will. There's always been a toilet in my bathroom. Yeah, Wilberforce, go. So what else you got? Well, there's uh, 35 and a half, or there's over 35 acres of plastic burning in Florida right now. How many acres? Uh, over 35. What does 35 acres of plastic look like? Looks like a plastic plant. I've never seen a plastic plant. Uh, nursery supplies and all that. Uh, industrial building in, was it Medley, Florida, I think? Let's see if you sell. It looks like a mushroom cloud. Uh, as a side note of the side note of the side note, apparently PS5s can survive house fires. Like this guy's PS5 is melted, but he's rejoicing on the inside and the outside because he's able to still play his games on it. I'm sure he's happy. It, it wasn't melted in that in those fires. This was an unrelated event, but still, this guy... Is one lucky IOB. I'm sure he's happy. I mean, those things are expensive, so. Yeah, he's saying to go get one right now. And it's not an advertisement. He just wants you to go get one out of his heart. Well, that's cool. Another thing I was reading this week, another innovation of AI technology is Samsung's Brigsby, Bigsby. There, That's what their AI assistant name is, is Bigsby. Mm. Has now the capability to clone your voice. And so what's the practicality of it? Once Brigsby learns your voice and clones it, it will start answering phone calls for you on your own behalf, sounding just like you. Yeah, so the new Galaxy 23 series, the Brigsby, the Bigsby uh, assistant has the ability to answer phone calls in your own voice and respond in preset responses i like that well i've been waiting because i was thinking all this voice cloning is all fun and games for pranks but when can we see some application and i saw a long time ago google had a phone answering and a phone calling service but it wasn't in your voice it was just like this really articulate ai but if now with voice cloning technology so good there's absolutely no reason why they couldn't clone your voice and just do the same thing, but it's in your voice. Yeah. But you know, it gets a little dangerous. How come? But if they call and say, hi, this is colleague, and I'd like to uh, transfer money to my other colleague. Oh, okay. And it sounds just like you. <laughs> and now it's like, yeah, can you transfer all my money from this bank account to that bank account? Yeah, but it's got to have all your passwords and passcodes. It's your phone. You know, one bone I've always had to pick with Google and Samsung and all these other big corporations. I tell it to save my passwords and it never does. So it's like, would you like to save this password after I get done typing it in? And I say yes every time. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, saying yes is actually, if you say yes backwards, it's still yes. No, I think it's say. Uh, if you say, say yes. The turn the say yes backwards. It's it's say yes. (laughs) 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 
this is it. <laughs> <laughs> say yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I always say yes. I, we can tell. <laughs> like I'm saying, literally just backward and front, true and forward. When you, I always say yes. Save my password. It never does. It literally, no matter, I don't know how many different ways to say yes. Sometimes it'll give me a wrong password from 40 years ago. It's like, I haven't even been alive for 40 years. You need to go in there and clean it up. Yeah. I don't know how to, you can know a man or know a woman, but you don't know them intimately in that sense of the word knowing them in the backlogs. In the third layer of the OSI model. (laughs) Yeah. In the soft drive. Well, anyways. (laughs) Well, (laughs) what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? What were we? We we're talking about. Anyways, I'm gonna Apple. Get, I'm gonna get back to what I was talking about, <laughs> which is Bigsby's AI assistant that can clone your voice, and now they can make phone calls for you on your behalf, sounding just like you. And I do think it's a neat feature. But it can be abused for sure. It's like, yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> you lose. <laughs> but anyways, that took a weird segue, but I just wanted you guys to <laughs> learn about the uprising AI. Bigsby is coming to a Samsung near you. What else you got on that tab? Uh, five teenagers were convicted of murder because they were throwing rocks over I-75 in uh, Michigan. One of the rocks struck and killed a man. I can imagine how scary it would be if you put yourself in that position. You're driving down the road. You're listening to some good tunes. Yeah, and then your head gets kicked in. What's interesting about these five young boys, they're in the teenagers um, their last names are interesting. A couple of them, like one is called Kyle Anger. His last name is Anger. He looks angry too. And the other guy, another one of the five is McCaden Payne. His, his last name is Payne. Uh, he doesn't look like Payne. He just, he looks like a banana. Anyway. Yeah. They were, uh, they got murder charges. All of them. Yeah. Murder was the case. So what else is on that toilet? Um, A video is circulating some of you may have or may not have seen. In fact, it's one of millions. People are picking up snow right off of the street. And it's like styrofoam. Like one guy is holding a handful of, like he just goes up, scoops up fresh powder. And it's, he's looking closely at it with his phone camera. And you can tell it's a bunch of little styrofoam balls. They're like that big and it's just styrofoam. And he's like, like this, he opens his fingers. They start falling through his fingers. Like there's clay in his hand. Another guy, another video that's circulating is this guy who's at a bar and he just starts filming and he walks outside, scoops up some snow from outside. He hands it to the bartender and it's all live not live. I mean, it's all one continuous video. Now maybe it's doctored. I don't know. He hands it to the bartender. He's like, hey, all right, here, here's another clump. Do it again. Do what you just did earlier. Do this again. I'm going to get on video this time. So the bartender compacts the snow into a snowball. And he pulls out a lighter and starts melting the snow. But it doesn't turn to water. The snow actually turns black and starts smoking. And everybody can. everybody's saying it smells like burnt plastic. And he, he, literally, it's black. You can literally see it. There's this black hole now in the snow. What do you think that is? I think it's snow. There's nothing to see here. As long as they don't boil it, they should be fine because that'll make it toxic. Have you ever tried burning snow? Yeah. What's I mean, it do? Well, it just melts into water. What do you think this is? Uh, something probably to do with Ohio because this guy, some of these people are like a state over from Ohio. Uh, whether north or south or east or west or wherever, but um, some people are actually in Ohio itself, and they're they're noticing these weird apparatuses. What would you do if you were in Ohio? 
I would uh, get out. Would you? Would you actually move? Probably. I'd probably rent out my house, but I'd re- I'd leave. I'd be out of that place. What if you just had an apartment? But I'd be leaving. That's even better. So hopefully the lease is up. If it wasn't, Sue. Would you really leave? Yes. Hmm. I'm sure all my friends and family would leave too. Where would you go? Probably Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the Celtics. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew that. Massachusetts. That is a bill HD3822. It is the bill that they are trying to pass to allow prisoners to exchange their organs and blood marrow for a reduced sentence up to 60 days to one year. That's where you want to go. Yeah, you know, I think it'd just be a nice uh, change of scenery. I think the kids would love it. Anyways, I'm going to end this episode on an interesting note. There has been a weird-looking fungus that has been discovered that could be biodegradable and and an alternative to plastic. The tinder fungus has some surprising properties. Swipe left. Scientists have discovered properties that could enable it to provide a natural biodegradable alternative to certain plastics and other materials. This tinder fungus they have discovered could be used to create some alternatives to plastic. I guess one means is you can make your plastic fork and then just eat it. Yeah, I've seen this on Willy Wonka. Like he's over here eating something or no, he's drinking tea and all of a sudden he eats the cup. From whence he was drinking. Anyways, that's all the time we have for today. We hope you guys enjoyed the show. We always enjoy bringing it to you guys. Hope your toilets are clean. Hope you guys have made sure you wiped it down smear free. And if we have any more breakthroughs, if we have any more breaking news, if we have any more emergencies, we will let you know. We will be trying to go live next week, so join us on Thursday. Um, I'm not sure what time, but we will be trying to go live, and we might actually advertise a little bit this week on all the platforms on us going live. So 12 o'clock. Check us out. It's going to be on YouTube. We're going to be going live, and we're going to be taking your questions. So come in. Be ready. Have your questions loaded. Be ready to relax and just let it all come out. Just let it flow. Yeah. You just need, like, yeah, just let yourself sit there and just melt. Anyways, we hope you guys enjoyed the show. Hope you guys uh, enjoy your week and your life, and we'll see you guys next Thursday. So until next time, we'll see you guys in the toilet zone. Neener, 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 neener.